Don't flatter me. Don't flatter me. So before I get going, I just want to ask a few people in the front. When I say the word millennials, what comes, like, what races through your mind? Just a few adjectives. Young people. Okay. Anybody over here? Technology. Technology? Now yeah. Curious. Yeah, very good, very good. Well, when I was a kid, I was always told that millennials were going to be the ones to solve the world's problems. And now I hear that the generations before mine are cashing in. They want to know what we're up to, and if we're even doing anything. <laughs> well, I can't promise anything, and I, I can't say for certain if the world is doomed or not when they're gone. But I can promise that millennials are everything I have heard. Idealistic, ambitious, innovative, dreamers, entitled, lazy, and clueless. But how can you be ambitious if you're lazy? And how can you be innovative yet clueless? Let me explain. Millennials have two types of people. Those who have brilliant ideas but watch life go by on Netflix. And those who have brilliant ideas but go chase them every single day. This millennial strives to be a part of that latter half. Five years ago today, I left an athletic and academic scholarship behind at a university to go home and work in a hospital. Yes. Yes, I know. Why? Turns out that nursing and medicine is nothing that TV told me it was going to be. Stop watching Grey's Anatomy. I spent a year depressed trying to figure out what I really wanted and then how I was going to move forward with what I wanted. Then one morning, my mother found me sobbing in the shower, and she just asked, what's wrong? And I was like, you know what, Mom? I'm just, I'm just not happy. And she already knew. So I was like, just blurted out as, as fast as I could, I don't want to be a nurse anymore, and I want to move to Florida. And while she had spent years convincing me of just how, how good of a nurse I was going to be, she didn't question me for a second. A month later, I was on my journey to Florida with my parents by my side, and they bought me an apartment, and then there I was, sat in that apartment, alone, with my cat, as they headed back to Michigan. A few months went by, along with the summer, and I started classes here. Y'all, my entire life changed. I met so many people, and I was studying what I wanted environmental science and the proper policy to sustain it. Fast forward through many trials and tribulations to about the past two years or so. And by, let's clear that up for a second. By trials and tribulations, I mean organic chemistry, calculus, some of you may know I'm still trying to figure that one out, and then shattering my right leg. I met some of the most passionate people, and they're my closest friends now. But I didn't meet them until about April of last year when I joined something called the Student Green Energy Fund, also known here on campus as SAGEF. Within four months of joining SAGEF, I was involved in the passing and politics of several projects, went on to develop one of my own all the way to the city was elected project proposal manager, and then invited on a committee with likes of sustainable directors from Duke Energy, the city, and a few key people from USFSP. Within two meetings, I went from listening in and just trying to feverishly write notes like I was in second grade again, because I was surrounded by brilliant people. 
Y'all, I went from two meetings of being a shy kid to headlining that committee and presenting and pitching a project to the city. And then the sewage crisis happened and the world stopped, but I capitalized, almost. Two weeks after the most recent dump off Albert Witted was also that meeting with that community that I was supposed to pitch my proposal to the city and I wanted them to hear it so bad that I put my heart into it. And while the city may not have fully took into consideration my solution, they used it. I put a personal piece into that. This is my best friend. She obtained Vibrio, a flesh-eating bacteria, while swimming in sewage-related spills on her Labor Day weekend at a beach. But she didn't know. She didn't know because it wasn't publicized. That beach was full of sewage. So I used it, put it in my presentation, and the whole room stopped talking. While my proposal may not have been chosen specifically, it helped provoke the city to reevaluate Albert Witted as a possibility, along with the entire county's sewage system. On March 12th, they announced the appropriation of $341 million to fix the system. For me, that was a win, and for the city as well. Y'all, I feel really blessed to live in a city who stands their problems in the face and then takes on solutions from an undergraduate student at a university. I wanted them so badly to hear it and they did. But enough about me, let's talk about my friends for a bit. We'll start with those on the SEGEF committee. Together we have put solar on top of the parking structure. Some of you may have parked in that structure. That structure is net zero because of this solar array and has saved the university a monetary invoice of about $7,000 annually. For those who don't know, that's Sophia on the far left there. She's our chancellor. She's one of the smartest people I know, and she's supportive of us. That's her when we put that solar array on the grid with Duke Energy. We have another 40 kilowatts on the way above the Pointer parking lot. Some of me, some of you may have parked in that parking lot already and not been authorized, but let me explain something. It's pretty cool. Those divots that you see in the medians are not just someone's mistake. They're called rain gardens. And they collect water from that runoff from the lot and filter it before it gets back into the aquifer and then into your water bottle. Pretty cool, eh? For those who see that white building in the back, it's called the Pointer Labs. We're pushing that building to be LEED Platinum, which will be the second of its kind in the state of Florida. We have successfully pushed the College of Business to LEED Gold, even though it's a glass box in South Florida. We had to get creative with that one. Came down to like the native plants that we planted outside and the type of cleaning supplies we use to clean that building, and how much and what type of recycling we put inside the building versus outside the building. But we did it. In December of 2016, the Sierra Club hosted a public press conference in celebration to celebrate the city and the university's combined commitment to each other in our respective climate action plans. That reminds me, as students, we successfully collected data for, wrote, and then pushed the chancellor to sign the university's first climate action plan in which we have set the university to be carbon neutral by 2050. Pretty ambitious. We then coupled that 
with the city first, real climate action plan was set targets. At that very ceremony after that press conference, so Jeff was awarded a plaque of recognition from the Sierra Club for being innovators in our own community. I thought that was pretty cool. We have successfully installed several water bottle refill stations on campus, which are highly desired. And for those who don't know, to this date, have saved about 500,000 plastic water bottles from entering landfills. And then here's the, the worst part. Some poor, unexpecting, third world countries water systems. That includes drinking water, because plastic knows no bounds. We have also passed a bike share program recently, just recently, within the past two weeks, that will be free to faculty, staff, and students to help meet our 2020 transportation goals that we committed to. Y'all, this just scratches the surface of what we've been able to accomplish. Soon an energy management system will be installed campus-wide so that we will be able to see each building's consumption and inefficiencies so that we will know exactly what to target and what we should fix, and even if we're lucky, how to fix it. But that's where our mind comes in. So I just want to thank our student cert committee who paid for that EMS system, and for admin for supporting us on that one, because it's not been an easy process. It's about four years in the making. So I'm sure at this point you're kind of wondering, like, great. Do we see any of this money back? Are we just investing because we want to be green? Are we just investing to be stewards of our own environment? Are we just investing because in 30 years we may be underwater? Great question. Signed officially four weeks ago, it all goes into our green revolving fund. From here on out, that revolving fund will capture project return. And I want to thank the student cert committee who thought of it, believed in it, and then pushed the university's CFO to sign it. I can't wait to use it. And I'm sure the university's wallet's going to thank you guys too. So one last thank you to our admin who helped us, our chancellor, Sophia, for believing in innovative dreamers who just had an ambition. And to our city partners, namely Duke Energy and the city sustainable director, for jumping on our train and supporting us. My, my friends and I, we don't get paid for any of this. We don't get paid. We just show up weekly with the collective goal of sparking positive change through sustainability and the mission to change the world. That being said, I, I want to highlight one last person. Y'all might know who this is. This is Lexi Ferguson. Lexi's graduating in the summer with the same degree as me. She's the chair of SIGEF, and she does it without a dime. From writing up purchase order after purchase order, expenditure request form after expenditure request form, making weekly agendas with goals and targets that she then follows up on. Hounds our budget guards, because Lord knows it's not just us in charge of that budget. Pushes us in the directions of our different goals and aspirations. Makes sure each and every one of us is heard at every meeting. All while going to school full time and working Two jobs. So I just want to leave you all with like a, a few questions of my own. Are millennials still that same lazy, entitled, and clueless generation? Or are we innovative dreamers who are ambitious and driven? Can you believe the change and positive impact that 10 people have been able to spark Here's the best part. Here's my favorite part. They're my friends. Y'all, my closest friends at that. 
We do everything together, and I, I, I'm sure someday it's going to come back to bite us, but we do everything together. And I feel lucky. I surround myself daily with brilliant people who just want to change the world. We don't get paid for it. We just love it. And so to every kid deep down inside who was ever told that their dream was just too far-fetched, that the overstandardization of the current system limits their creativity. And to every kid who will be told that they cannot achieve, dream, innovate, and achieve. Because the world needs you, we have some serious problems to solve. Thank you all for coming out. It was an absolute honor. I fulfilled the dream tonight. Thank you.